OK, so we're going to find which of these two numbers is bigger, where here we've got 2 to the power of 3, but then this 4 on the left isn't a power of 4, this actually represents a tetration. So here, inside the brackets, we've got 2 to the power of 3, that means 2 multiplied by itself 3 times, so that's just 8. But then instead of doing 8 to the power of 4, we're actually doing, instead of repeated multiplication, we're doing repeated exponentiation, so you'd have written like this, it would look like 8 to the power of 8 to the power of 8 to the power of 8. And just to make it really clear, when we evaluate these, you always work from the top down. I'll explain a little bit at the end why we do this, but we would work doing 8 to the power of 8, then whatever that is, it's a very big number, you would do 8 to the power of that, then whatever huge number you get left there, you would do 8 to the power of that. And this is different from, it's not exactly the same as doing 8 to the power of 8, then raising that answer to the power of 8, and finally raising that answer to the power of 8. Because here, we could just use our laws of indices to multiply these three 8s, and this would be 8 to the power of 512, which is a very big number, but nowhere near as big as this expression is. So if we want to compare this expression, the left-hand one, to this one on the right-hand side, our one on the right-hand side, we've got a tetration of order 4, the number 3 there. So we would write this as a stack of four threes. then finally we raise 2 to this power. And we're going to compare this now with our 8 to the 8 to the 8 to the 8 expression. And to make the comparison nice here, you can see here we've got a power of 2. We can actually express 8 as a power of 2, because 8 is just... 2 cubed. So we could write this as 2 cubed, all raised to the power of this 8 to the 8 to the 8. And here we can use our laws of indices knowledge that actually if you've got a number raised to a power in brackets, then raised to another power, instead of having it with the brackets, we can get rid of this and just write this as 2 to the power of 3 times this 8 to the 8 to the 8 expression. And at this point we're comparing 2 raised to some different powers, so we can actually just compare the powers instead. So whichever of these two powers is biggest is going to give us the biggest answer when we raise 2 to that power. So we can now compare the slightly simpler looking 3 times this tetration of order 3 versus this tetration of order 4 of the number 3. But at this point it becomes quite difficult now to compare this 8 and this 3. So we'll actually make a little approximation here and see where this gets us. So instead of having 8, let's just use the approximation that 8 is roughly equal to 9, and we'll see where this gets us. So bear in mind this has made this left-hand expression bigger than it actually should be. But if we approximate this by having 9 to the 9 to the 9, we can rewrite this now as 3 times 9 to the 9 to the 9, and we're comparing this to 3 to the 3 to the 3 to the 3. And the reason we've chosen 9 is because 9 is also a power of 3, like we saw before, so we can replace this 9 by a 3 squared, so then we're left with 3 times 3 squared to the power of this 9 to the 9, which we can write as 2 times 9 to the 9 in our power there, because it's 3 squared in brackets raised to this power of 9 to the 9 using our laws of indices. So now we can compare this with 3 to the 3 to the 3 to the 3 if we just leave this expression alone. And we can actually get rid of this 3 on the outside here, and we can take this into the power so that now it's a really nice comparison. On the left-hand side, we've got a power of 2 times 9 to the 9 plus 1, and on the right-hand side, we've got this tetration of order 3. So we just need to compare these two powers, and again, using the fact that 9 is 3 squared, we can rewrite this expression as 2 times the 3 squared to the power of 9. But remember, 3 squared raised to the power of 9, we can use our laws of indices to actually write this as 3 to the power of 18, from 2 times 9. We still add 1 to this. We want to compare this to, for this expression, we can actually start to evaluate this going from the top down now. So 3 to the power of 3 is 27, so this is just 3 to the power of 27. And at this point you can actually see the expression on the left is going to be much smaller than the one on the right. So we've got 3 to the 18, even if we multiply this by 2 and add 1, it's still not going to be as big as 3 to the power of 19, never mind 3 to the power of 27. And remember, this left-hand expression, when we change those 8s into 9s, we actually made this bigger than it should be. So even by increasing the number quite a lot, it's still going to be much, much smaller than our expression on the right. So we can conclude then that our expression on the left, we've got 2 to the power of 3, 
this tetration of order 4, this is actually going to be much, much smaller than having 2 to the power of 3, where we have a tetration of order 4 there, of the number 3. And we'll finish now just by exploring why we evaluate these going working downwards rather than starting from the bottom and working upwards. So if you were to work upwards, the temptation there is you would write this, for example, as 3 to the power of 3, then just raise that answer to the power of 3. And part of why we don't do this is, first of all, it would make this notation a bit redundant. You'd have 3 to the 3 to the 3. You could just write like this, 3 to the 3 in brackets raised to the power of 3. And of course, these aren't actually equal to each other. But here's a really nice example to convince you further. Let's imagine we've got 2 to the power of x plus y squared minus 1. So with this example, I think it's quite clear that we're going to do x plus y squared minus 1. This is our power, and then raise 2 to the power of that. We're certainly not going to try and do 2 to the power of x plus y minus 1, then square that answer. And I think the confusion here is when we get power towers like this, it's not as clear as ones where we have addition and subtraction, multiple things going on in the power there. And where this gets really interesting now is, let's imagine we had x was equal to 1, and we'll say y equals 3. So then this expression, substituting in x is 1, we're going to have 1 minus 1 cancel out with each other, so this becomes 2 to the 3 to the power of 2. So if we were to evaluate this working from the bottom up, you'd have 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, and then square that, so you'd get 64. Whereas if you were to work from the top down, you would do 2 to the power of 3 squared, so 2 to the power of 9, and you would actually get 512. So you get a very, very different answer depending on how you work with this. So this is the convention that we always work going downwards rather than working going upwards. And if you're interested and want to challenge yourself now, I'm going to leave you with a problem. Let's do 3 to the power of 4, then we'll do a tetration of order 5 of that number. And let's compare this now to doing 3 to the power of 4, where we have a tetration of order 5 there of the number 4 in our power. So see if you can work out which of these two numbers is bigger.